Praise God. Jesus is alive. Amen. Let's all stand all across this building. What wonderful services we've been having. What a presence of God we've been experiencing and continue to experience. Now, if nothing's going to be different Good Friday. Nothing's going to be different Resurrection Sunday. We're going to have the presence of God in here in a supernatural way. But the presence of God is here now. He's moving in our midst. He's going to do something supernatural in your life. And our guest tonight is someone who is no stranger to the supernatural power of God. You've seen him on TBN. You've seen him on major Christian networks. He's an international recording artist. He and his wife, Keisha, are planting a church in Atlanta, Georgia, right now. And he's back with us at World Harvest Church. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Pastor Trent Corey. Hallelujah. How many of you feel good tonight? Come on, can you give the Lord a good shout and a clap like you got some energy in here? Come on. Somebody give God a good praise, like the kind of praise that'll break something loose. Come on. Y'all know we don't do quiet church. Hallelujah. Man, it's good to be in God's house. Do you, do you feel good? You know what? I think I, some of y'all lost weight since the last time I was here. You looking good. Feel good? Glory to God. You know, it was uh, last November. It was this past November was the last time um, that uh, I was able to be with you all. And it was such an honor. And how many of you believe that winning Wednesday is a powerful thing that's changing your life? Come on. You're already winning because you're here. See, sometimes you just got to show up that's one of the things that I learned as an athlete is you know you just got to show up you know you just got to keep on keeping on you got to keep believing sometimes you're walking through stuff that you don't want to walk through but you just got to keep showing up and I promise you you're gonna walk through whatever God has uh, and into whatever God has for your life um, it's an awesome 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 uh, privilege to be here with you guys tonight. Listen, why don't you greet somebody around you? Tell them you're winning already. You're winning already. I'm gonna sing at the end. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a singer. I love to sing. But I'm gonna jump right in the word tonight, and then we're. I feel like somebody's about to have a breakout moment here. Come on. Come on. I feel like somebody's about to have a breakout moment right here on Wednesday night. Anybody feel like breaking out tonight? Come on. You didn't come out here tonight just because you didn't have anything else to do. You, you need a breakout moment. You know, I need a breakout moment in our life. Uh, you can take a seat. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out. And um, I can't, can't be here for even a moment without just telling uh, Pastor, Dr. Parsley how much we love and look up to him and appreciate him. Don't you love your pastor, he and Miss Joni? They are... People who are impacting uh, people like me all over the world. I remember as a young man, uh, I remember sitting in my living room, uh, Mama Parsley, I remember sitting in my living room and watching Dominion Camp Meeting as a teenager. And the power of God literally, literally changing my life, changing my direction, changing my future because of the anointing that's resting on your pastor and on this church. And I just want to tell you, whatever you do, don't ever stop changing the world. Oh, I, I, I didn't find anybody right there. Because see, sometimes, you know, I, I, sometimes in our lives we, we get selfish because we want our blessing. We need God to do something for us, right? God, please, whatever you do, you know, bless me. You know, we pray in the prayer of Jabez every morning wake up. Oh, Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't mistake what I'm saying. However, realize that you're on this earth to live a life poured out. You're not in this earth just to live a life where you get poured into. You're, you live on, you're living on this earth because... God wants to pour something into you so much so that it begins to overflow and spill on everybody around you. So I will tell you right now, from this young man from Georgia, I grew up in the Atlanta, Georgia area, and I sat and I watched and I was encouraged by people who are probably in this auditorium right now who were down here shouting and praising God and I was watching you and you were lifting my soul. You were encouraging my spirit and something tangible was invading my life. 
Your pastor's taught you that the anointing is tangible. And I just want to encourage you, whatever you do, don't ever stop reaching the world. If you're, go if you're going to be committed to that, give the Lord a clap and a shout like you believe He's good. Come on. Hallelujah. Man, it feels good to be here. Yes, my wife and I, we just, we're in our seventh week um, of planting a church. It is, it's so cool. We worked in the local church. Um, I think Pastor Jim Rayleigh has preached here, right? Hasn't Pastor Rayleigh preached here before? We worked with Pastor Rayleigh for about nine years. And then God just began to explode opportunity. And so, for, and then for about eight years, I've been on the road full time as a gospel recording artist, preaching, all these kind of things. And about four years ago, God put in my wife and I, Keisha, by the way, honey, if you're watching, I love you. You're the much, much better part of me. Um, you're just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. Got three children, and she is my baby mama. Come on. She is all that and then some. But God had put in our heart to pastor. He had put it there and, and, he, and he hid that seed. But you know, just because God puts something in your heart, it has a time and a season. And patience works a great thing in your life. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit. You've got to learn how to be patient and wait on God to open up doors and opportunities for your life. You can't just get a word from God one day and say, okay, uh, you know, tomorrow, Lord, if you don't do it, I'm, I'm out. Okay, sometimes it's an instantaneous miracle, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time. So what, what we did is we, we, we took that thing and we prayed over it. And we spent years asking God where, how, when, to whom are you calling us? You know, these are questions that you've got to ask God. Lord, why am I on this earth? What am I supposed to do besides be a banker? Come on. What am I supposed to do besides be a teacher? What am I supposed to be doing besides being an attorney? What does God have on my life for this kingdom for now? And so finally we landed on, it's actually Albany, Georgia. I live in uh, southwest Georgia. It's a couple hours south of Atlanta. And uh, we planted a church. It's called Hope City United. Hey, look us up. Watch out for us. We're coming for you. Now, Hope City United, if, if any of our beautiful people are watching, God bless y'all. I love you. I can't wait to see you Sunday. It's my favorite day of the week uh, now because I get to spend it with you all. And for those of you who are watching on iHeart TV tonight, thank you so much for joining us. I'm about to get into this word because I believe God is about to change some moments around this place tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about the moments of our life. Um, as I was getting ready to, to speak tonight, I was reminded of uh, an app on my phone called Instagram. How, how, many, how, many, how many have Instagram? How many have Facebook? Hey, some of y'all are on Facebook Live streaming me right now. Uh, Instagram, it, it's an amazing concept. Because seven people got together and they figured out that moments are very important to people. And they figured out how to capture a moment of your life and let the entire world see it. And, and so what they did is they created this app where you can take a picture anywhere in the world and somebody on the other side of the world can see exactly what you're doing, exactly who's in the picture with you, exactly what you're saying if you want to make a little video. And, and, and it's amazing what happened. They founded it, check it out, in October of 2010. In April of 2012, they sold it for a billion dollars. Oh, that was a good year and a half. That's a B, like a billion dollars. A billion dollars. What did they do? They figured out that people were interested in the moments of their life. And I want to tell you tonight that there's nobody more interested in the moments of your life than Jesus. And I want to tell you tonight, I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes on a subject matter called the moment maker. Jesus is the great moment maker. Jesus is the one that you need in your life to change 
anything and everything that you need changed. It's, it's a beautiful thing to be in this resurrection season because I love the person of Christ. I love the stories of Jesus. And I want to turn uh, with you right now to Luke 5. I'm going to use a couple of different passages of Scripture tonight, uh, familiar passages of Scripture um, that I'm sure uh, Pastor has preached and, and ex just exposited and pulled out and mined. Uh, if he was here tonight, I would feel like a Pop Warner football player in front of an NFL scout. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, Pastor, if you're watching tonight, I love you. I'm kind of glad you're not sitting right there because I would be a little intimidated, but I, I love you so much. Thank you for allowing me to be in the pulpit tonight. But check it out, Luke 5. So it was as the multitude pressed about him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled when all night. <laughs> we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. How many of you could handle that kind of favor and blessing on your life tonight? So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. God Bless your word tonight. Bless every person that's under my voice, whether they're watching by stream or whether they're in this building. And Lord, teach us how to give you the moments of our life tonight in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a good amen. Number one, tonight I want to talk to you. I'm, I'm a point preacher. I want to give you some things that you can take home with you. Number one uh, the, that I want to talk to you tonight about your life is that you need to snap a pic. Take a picture. Whatever they got, take a picture. I say snap a pic. What are you saying, Trent? I'm saying that in order for you to figure out where you're at in your life, you need to figure this out. You'll see this if you're an Instagram user. You'll see where people put, this is my current situation. Some of the young people will know what I'm talking about. They'll use a hashtag and they'll say, my current situation. And I'm going to ask you tonight, what is your current situation? What are you looking at tonight? You know, I always, I always like am frustrated if I'm working hard or if I'm in the middle of, of uh, doing something and I'm really, really busy and I'll open up my social media and I'll look at it and I'll see somebody has taken a picture and they're like on an island in the Bahamas somewhere. Uh, you know, they've got the palm trees and the sand and they're like, this is my current situation. <laughs> I'm like, well, my current situation is I'm working. That's what my current situation is. What are you saying, Trent? In order to realize what you need in your moment, you got to realize what's already there. you got to look at your current situation. So what are you saying? I'm going to ask you some questions tonight. Are you exhausted? Are you content? Are you hopeful? Are you frustrated? If you took a picture of yourself tonight, would you be anxious? Would you be searching? Are you believing for something? Are you trusting? Are you needing a breakthrough? Peter needed a breakthrough. Peter had fished all night. He had given up. He had gone to the shore. And guess what? The great moment maker walks onto the scene. And he says, check it out. Get in the boat. We're going to teach for a little while, and then I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how I can bring you into opportunities, check it out, that you can't see. I'm going to bring you into miracle opportunities that you can't see because your frustration has you in a place where you've already tried that before, and you're frustrated because 
it hasn't been working. And Jesus is like, yeah, the problem is you haven't exactly had me in the right position in the boat. And so a lot of times we try to go do things and we go, we say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm gonna, this is my dream. And, and we take off down this road in the flesh and we don't have Jesus in the boat. Check it out. God specializes in taking the ingredients to our most frustrating moments and turning them into miracles. Write it down. Take a picture of it. God specializes in taking the ingredients to our most frustrating moments and turning them into miracles. You know what? Sometimes you've got to leave people behind and you've got to get isolated with Jesus. You see, because if Peter would have said, okay, Lord, well, we've been doing this all night. Get in somebody else's boat. Oh, no, no. See, see Jesus said, get in the boat. So there's an, there's an obedience, peace, to what you need God to do in your life. So if you want your current situation to change, you got to get Jesus in the boat and you got to get some obedience in your life. So what are you saying, Trent? I'm saying that Jesus is the master. Watch now. Jesus is the master of erasing, erasing your history and working with your now. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Jesus is the master of erasing your history and working with your now. So in other words, he has the capacity to take you from a place where you have been frustrated doing one thing and he can take you, get in the boat with you and show you just a little, just a little adjustment. He said, you just weren't in deep enough water, son. You just weren't in deep enough water. If you'll come out into the deep and get me in the boat with you, I'll show you how to turn your mess into a miracle. And I'm telling you tonight that the moment maker wants to step into your current situation and he wants to turn it around. Uh, can somebody just give the Lord a clap and a shout if you believe like he's worthy? Come on. Do you believe God can do it? Good. Number two, can I get a retake? Retake the picture. Retake the picture. My wife... How many of you know people that want to take pictures? But if you know if you're going to take a picture with them, it's going to be a long photo shoot just to get a picture to post on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're talking about, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be there a minute. My wife is so cute. She's, she's watching tonight, so I'm going to be real nice. But my wife will be like, honey, we'll be at dinner or breakfast. She'll be like, let's take a, let's take a picture and let's post it on online, you know, and I'll say, okay, baby, so I'll, and she'll be like, ta -ta -ta -ta. I mean, it's so fast, she can take so many pictures at one time, it's unbelievable, she takes all these pictures, and then she'll go, no, I don't like that one, I don't like the way that one looks, let's take another one, you know what, sometimes in our life, we just need to retake the picture, sometimes we need to get some things out of our moment that don't belong, can I find anybody tonight? This, this is one of the things that I love. Back in Luke 5, 3, it said, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Simon did a very simple thing. He just retook the picture. He had already stepped out of the boat. He had already given up and washed the nets. He got Jesus in the boat. Here's the problem with modern-day America, and I believe sometimes with modern-day Christianity. Jesus cannot be brought in later using Photoshop. Oh, I, I'm going to step on it tonight. See, I'm starting slow, but y'all don't know I'm coming. Listen, you can't go and live just any kind of way, do any kind of thing with your life, express yourself any kind of way. I just want, I just want to be free. You can't disobey the laws of God and expect to harvest. You can't go running around saying, I'm ahead and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I got Deuteronomy 28. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham is mine and you don't tithe. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I, I just said something there. I just said, uh, you don't give offerings, you don't tithe, but you bless and highly favor. You've done it. You're claiming promises that you don't have a legal contract or right to. 
Oh God, oh God, that's, I know I said a lot right there. You say, there's a covenant, the word of God is a covenant, and uh, what a covenant is, is a contract. So there's two sides to a contract. So if I want to buy a house, and I sign the contract, and send it to the seller, if they don't execute the contract, there's no deal. The problem is, is that God's already signed the contract. And in America, what we want to do, is we want to get the house without signing the contract. Oh, Jesus. That was nice. I'm going to be nice. What do you want to do, Trent? I want to help you change the moments of your life. I want to help you see the moment maker for who he is tonight. There's another story of another moment that I'll share with you real fast. This is while he spoke these things to them. Behold, a ruler came. This is in Matthew 9. It's another story about the moment maker. Behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, Listen, my daughter's just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she'll live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, you've heard this story preached so many times, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I'll be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now, when I was reading this story, I had to rewind for a minute because I thought a rich young ruler had asked Jesus to come to his house. Does it frustrate you when you ask God to do something in your life and you feel like you've got to get in the line like you're at King's Island to get a miracle? while everybody else got the express pass? I got express pass. Y'all enjoy that one hour wait. And the woman was made well, the Bible says. When Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the flute players, the noisy crowd wailing. So on his way to do what the ruler said, come into my moment, Lord. My daughter's dying. Come into my moment. My, my business is failing, God. Come into my moment. My, my daughter, God, uh, is, needs to get into a college. Come into my moment, God. Uh, my relationship with my spouse is failing. Come into my moment, God. And while you're trying to get Jesus in your moment, you're watching people all in your world getting blessed. And it seems like sometimes your prayers just hit the ceiling and come back down. The Bible said, make room for the girls not dead but sleeping. And they ridiculed Jesus. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. The question is this. How do you deal with your moment when other people's moments are being favored and you're still waiting to see God move on your behalf? Quick question. God will test your patience and capacity, here you go, while he is in your moment by seeing if you can celebrate someone else's moment. God will test your capacity. How much can I favor you? Can you celebrate with your brothers and sisters or are you just in it for you? But check it out. If you will just learn how to celebrate all through this journey, if you will learn how to celebrate the favor and the blessings of others around you, if you'll learn how to lead them in. I love hearing about the outreach that's going to happen for Resurrection Day. Listen, if there's anything you do in the next 10 days, be a part of those outreaches. Don't just walk in here and walk out and leave. Listen, somebody's life depends on you. Did you know that in the first week that we started our church, I walked into Sam's Wholesale Club. And I was buying a bunch of stuff because in week one of Hope City United being founded, we started feeding the hungry. Oh, yeah. It was, a, it was a novel concept. Because if you'll do what Jesus said to do and love on the people that nobody seems to want, it seems like he might just bless you with the people everybody wants. You know, because God's concepts are not our concepts. So we started feeding the hungry. Mama Parsley, tonight. I was not there, but tonight there were over 100 people fed tonight. They line up in seven weeks. Seven weeks. They have 100 people lined up feeding the hungry every, every Wednesday. What are you saying, Trent? I'm saying that if you learn how to get Jesus in your moment, 
Learn how to do what he needs you to do. Learn how to be the man he needs you to be, the woman he needs you to be. Do the outreach. Listen, somebody's life is depending on you. Don't just be worried about your own blessing. Resurrection is all about sharing the love, the power, and the grace and mercy of a Savior who was willing to lay his life down so that we could live forever. Come on. Tonight is, is, is my challenge to you. Be a part of those outreaches in the coming weeks. Number three, filter or no filter? Mm-hmm. Filter or no filter? Most people don't realize that their situation could actually look a lot better with the right filter. What does a filter do? A filter takes away blemishes. It takes away things. I tell my wife all the time, when you take a picture of me, I need that skinny filter. <laughs> Anybody else know what I'm talking about? I'm like, put the skinny filter on me, baby. I, I need you to get that angle right. Do what you got to do, but, but give me the skinny filter. What did you say? But Simon answered in Luke 5, 5. He said to him, Master, we've told all night. Check it out. But nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. You see, Simon Peter realized that he could look at his situation one of two ways. Filter or no filter. What are you talking about, Trent? I'm talking about the Jesus filter. I'm talking about when you are looking at impossible situations in your life, if you put the Jesus filter on it, it becomes possible. Come on. When you're looking at your moment and you don't know exactly how you're going to figure it out, if you'll just put the Jesus filter on it, you'll get some direction. Come on. If you'll look and if you're hurting and if you're going through something in your life, if you'll put the Jesus filter on it, you'll see that there's nothing missing and that there's nothing broken. But in our lives, we have to learn how to put the Jesus filter on everything that we face. Next Friday night, there's going to be a great miracle service here. You know what needs to happen? You need to put the Jesus filter on your sickness. Come on. You need to put the Jesus filter on your problems. You need to put the Jesus filter on whatever you're up against because check it out. The Jesus filter changes the channel to the All Things Are Possible network. So we got to get the Jesus filter, apply it to our life, and watch and see what God will do. The very last thing I want to do, and I'm going to ask the uh, musicians to come and help me close. I'm going to close a little bit different tonight, uh, if the musicians will come. The last thing I'm going to ask you to do about learning how to get the moment maker into your life. It's the fourth and final thing I'm going to talk about tonight. Number four, take a selfie. I'm going to ask you to take a selfie. So number one, we've, we've taken the picture. We see what the moment looks like. Number two, we have retaken and recaptured the picture with Jesus in the boat. Come on. We have realized that we cannot Photoshop Christ in after everything else that we have tried to go through and figure out ourselves. Number three, we've learned how to apply the Jesus filter Number four, the last and most important thing I'm going to ask you to do tonight is to take a selfie. And I'm not going to ask you to take the kind of selfie that the world takes. Because generally when you take a selfie, you're just trying to show people the exterior of who you are. But I'm going to ask you tonight to put an x-ray on your camera. And I'm going to ask you to take a selfie of the inside of who you are. Because as we enter resurrection season, there's something that I learned. I learned this week and I, I was just praying and I was asking God. I was like, Lord, how can, how can I be a voice to the beautiful people on Winning Wednesday at, at World Harvest Church? What can, I, what can I bring to the table? And God took me in the midst of these other scriptures about about the moment maker. He took me to another moment. And that last moment was in Matthew 26. And it's another very familiar story about another very familiar moment. It's when the disciples were in an uproar about a woman who had come in with some very expensive oil. And she had poured it on the master. And as she began to pour that oil on the master... 
They got very upset with them. They got very upset with her. But this is what the scripture says. But when Jesus was made aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you don't always have. Here you go. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. I started meditating on that word right there. I started med meditating on the moments of my life. I started meditating on this moment that Jesus was in with this woman. I started imagining what it, was to, what it must have been like for him to be there knowing. that she was pouring oil on his body so that he could go to a cross so that he could die I started meditating on that word and I, it started it started like sinking into my heart very deep and, and the Lord just spoke to me and said this Trent everybody wants to be anointed but nobody wants to die You know what the problem is right now in the world? Everybody wants the anointing. Nobody wants the cross. Everybody wants the blessing. Nobody wants to obey. Everybody wants the favor. Nobody wants the obedience. And I want to tell you tonight, if you want the moments of your life to change, you're going to have to be willing to lay it down and take up your cross and follow the one who laid down his life for you and for me. If you want your moments to change, you've got to get out of a casual relationship with God and into a love relationship with God. If you want the moments of your life to change, you're going to have to make a decision. I'm taking a selfie, and if it doesn't look like I need it to look, I'm going to change who is in the picture. See, the problem in the modern day church is that we got too many people taking selfies and you got everything in the world photo bombing your moment. You got drugs, you got illicit pornography, you got problems, you surfing on the internet places you ought not to go and then coming and asking God to bless your family. Oh, I'm talking now. I just broke it right on down. What are you saying? If you want your moment to change, you got to be willing to die. I'm asking you tonight, World Harvest Church, I'm challenging you tonight. Challenging you tonight. Your life, it was worth the cross for Jesus. Now what is the cross worth to your life? Your life was worth the cross for Jesus. What is the cross worth to your life? Take a selfie. Getting into the boat with Jesus and launching out into the deep is an invitation to die to your selfie. It's an invitation to die. And see, his way is the way. Tonight, Without a doubt in my mind, I know for a fact that there are some people in this room that God in the last three minutes just, just came and invaded your space. And God wants to change some moments that are in this room tonight. You know, the Jesus filter on our selfie, check it out, promotes us from the sting of death to the power of the resurrection. So this is what an unfiltered life could look like. You want to know what it looks like without the Jesus filter? It looks like this. Disrespect. Dishonor. Unlovable. Low self-esteem. Abortion. Maybe you're watching tonight on iHarv.tv and you can't forgive yourself because your past seems to be weighing you down. Listen, Jesus will forget what you remember. And I'm telling you tonight, no matter if it's pain, if it's cancer, if it's broken, if it's hopeless, if you're abandoned, lifestyle, bad choices, hashtags, come on, negativity, addiction, pornography, alcoholic, abused, lust, deceiver, dishonesty, desires, unhealthy relationships, lack, not enough, where is God? 
That's an unfiltered life. But a filtered life can look like this. Hope. <laughs> a future. Kindness. Come on, where y'all at tonight? Patience. Grateful. Respected again. Some of y'all feel like you have lost respect come on even in your own house because of your past but I'm telling you if you put the Jesus filter on your life tonight you can get the respect back of your children I heard the Lord say that as soon as I'm as sure as I'm standing here somebody in here is battling with the fact that you feel like your children do not respect you because of the choices that you have made but God is about to restore a relationship tonight for somebody and he's about to bring you into a place of respect and your children are gonna honor you and call you blessed. I heard the Lord say it. You can send me an email, Trent at TrentCoy.com and tell me that you got delivered tonight. Listen, confident, love, joy, happiness, victorious, conqueror, hey, peace, expectation, wholeness, fullness, holy, covered, more than enough, gyra, healed, righteous, for Given grace, mercy, love, resurrected Jesus. That's what the Jesus filter will do in your life tonight. So I just want to encourage somebody who's here. If you need the moment in your life to change, if you need something to turn around, if you need God to do something that you can't do all by yourself, if you need him to step in the boat, come on, and launch you out into deeper water, if you've got things in the background that don't belong in your picture, It's time to let the moment maker step into the boat. All over this place tonight, just throw your hands up. Can you take a moment and just begin to worship? I feel like God's about to change somebody's moment tonight. Might be only seven. Might be seven people here. But God's about to change somebody's moment tonight. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Somebody's about to lay down some stuff that's been in your picture that don't belong. Oh, God. Somebody's a walk, about to walk out of, out of the wrong relationship. Oh, yeah, I'm talking now. Somebody's about to walk into the career you're supposed to be in and away from the one that's frustrating you. God thinks a lot about you. He sent Jesus to die. Woo! Come on, all over this place tonight. I'm going to sing for a minute and then I'm going to open up. I want you to ask God in the next two minutes. Ask God in the next two minutes. You thought I was worth saving. Ha <laughs> ha! So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. <laughs> so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you came and saved my life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. You Come on, Jesus thinks a lot about you tonight. You thought I was worth Somebody just invite him into this moment right now. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell. Come on, sing it again. You thought I was worth saving. Yes, he did. Come on. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Oh, oh. I feel the anointing sweeping up in here. You thought I was to die for. Somebody's desperate for your moment to change. So I could be free. So I could be. So I can tell Come on, sing it one more time You thought I was worth saving Yeah So you came and changed 
I'm talking to at least 13 people right now. There are some things in your world, in your selfie, in your picture that don't belong there. And I'm telling you, there's an anointing sweeping in here right now. And God's about to meet you at this altar. I'm not calling you down. I'm not telling you you're condemned. I'm telling you that you're resurrected. Come on. And what I want you to do tonight is if you got some stuff in your life that needs to leave, there's one right there. The anointing's about to hit your life. Come on, lift your voice. Look at that. There they come. God's about to change some words tonight. God's about to change some moments in this place tonight. Somebody walk out of yesterday and walk into tomorrow. So I could be So I could tell In the name of Jesus, I command everything to let you go. Loose in Jesus. Riba Shata, Kerabara. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die so. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saying. He's walking into a new future right now, yeah. So you came and changed. Just walk it out, you yeah, yeah. You cleaned me up, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for, yeah. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving, yes you did. You got, I, I heard the Lord say, it's like, it's like stuff that is, uh, has been in, in the back, in the past, is trying its best to keep a hook in you. But God said tonight, the hooks are coming out. Be free. My God, I so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell. Come on, world harvest. Are y'all ready to go home? Or do you want to press? You thought I was worth keeping. God. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die. anointing here there's an anointing here to release addictions yes. 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 I'm just being honest oh really right there yeah right, well yeah right there in front of me you know y'all are starting to stir up my gift there's an anointing here to release addictions I don't know what it is sir but you can walk away I know you don't think you can but God can supernaturally he can do it you know God loves you man 
First time he's ever been in this place. Look at God. Give me a high five. Come on. You're about to get your life back. I just heard the Lord say, you're getting your life back. And it's coming back tonight. So I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. I don't know what you have walked through, but it doesn't matter what you've walked through. You know what? The first things are this. The first thing is, Jesus, whatever I've done, I need you to wash me with your blood. I need you to forgive me with your grace and your mercy. It don't matter. It don't matter. Do you know the man I told the story about tonight was a murderer? Peter was a murderer. But you know what? God loves you so much that he stopped this service on a night that you've never even been to church to tell you that your past is not who you are. Do you hear me? Your past is not who you are. Yesterday, last night, the night before, this past week, that is not who you are. You are a child of God. You are God's favorite. You are favored by the Lord. You are loved by God. You are forgiven by God. All you got to do is ask. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confess with your mouth, He's going to wash away the past. In other words, when you walk out of here tonight, check it out. This is the coolest thing about Jesus. When you walk out of here tonight, what you remember about yourself, He will have already forgotten. I need about seven men, strong men, to gather around this man right here. I just heard the Lord say that. Seven men. I'm going to go old school on y'all for a second. Yeah. 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 Y'all done stirred up the old school on me. Matter of fact, if some of y'all out there in the congregation, men, if you just want to converge on him, I heard the Lord say, you about to surround him. You are about to surround him. And as you surround him, every devil that has been trying to keep him back for his last 42 years are about to be released off of his life. Come on, man. Where y'all at? You thought I was so you came and changed my life. My God, I feel you thought I was worth keeping. That's deliverance right there. You clean me up inside. And you thought I was to die for. Come on, world harvest. Somebody press. Somebody press on the atmosphere so I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're watching tonight on iHarv.tv, wherever you are, maybe you got somebody in your family and you need God to deliver them from drugs or addictions. I want to tell you that the anointing that is present in this room right now is transferable. And we just speak right now that every matter of addiction be healed, that every matter of sickness be healed, that God would begin to invade your house, invade your life with blessing and with favor and redemption and grace. Come on. Man, I feel the anointing in here. So you some of my college students to come out here. Where are some college students? Get, get the, some of y'all come down here. The world doesn't need something fancy. They need the anointing. They need the anointing. I just, I just heard the Lord say for all of y'all to link elbows, like link up. You're not here. Okay, we can take it all the way across. Is that also? Yeah.
I'm not. I'm not trying to step out of my position or, or anything like that. I'm simply saying that I heard the Lord say for y'all to link elbows and that the Spirit of God is about to move right through y'all. Yes, and that some of the miracles that happen in the next 10 days are going to happen through you. Yes. They're going to happen through your hands. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, the power of God is hitting these kids. Look at this. I'm telling you. Don't play around. God wants to give you a ministry that is so much more than you could think or imagine. God wants to help you get people delivered. He doesn't just want to help you sing good or preach good. Young people, I dare you to begin to cry out in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the power of God's hitting people. I'm not touching them. You're about to enter into a season where it's not about a man touching you. God's going to put his hand on you. Because he's walking into your moment right now. I said, God's walking into your moment right now. And his hand is the mighty hand. And I declare over every student right now in this line that the power of God wrecks your life. You thought I was worth saving. I dare you to cry out to God, World Harvest you Baba Father, Valor. So you cry out, Valor. You thought I was to die for. So you. Some of y'all, God is changing your life right now. I'm telling you, I know it. So I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth. There's a move of God in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command invaded this place on this Wednesday night so you clean me up inside you thought I was to die for oh. so you sacrifice your life so I could be free this right over here that young lady right there somebody get a kid just just show that's what I looked like when I was about 17 go into deep water you better tend the sheep on the back of the hill when nobody's watching you want an anointing prepare to die God anoint me anoint me this resurrection season this is my final prayer tonight and then I'm going to just continue to minister and turn it over. My, my, my prayer resurrection season is this. That God's delivering people here tonight. I'm, I'm telling you. Look, look right there. I'm telling you. There's a deliverance happening. Another one right down there. My prayer in this resurrection season is this. Anoint me God. Yeah. So that I can...
can prepare to die to anything and everything that is not you and resurrect me into everything that you have designed me to be all across this beautiful sanctuary tonight from the front to the back from side to side my prayer for you is that would God that God would invade your moments God would invade your life I dare you to take the next 10 days I dare you if you think this is strong just wait till next Friday night when pastor comes in here and miracles start breaking out I'm telling you I dare you to take the next 10 days there was a famous politician once that said ask not what your country can do for you but ask what you can do for your country I dare you in the next 10 days to ask not what your church can do for you but what can you do for your church yeah. what can you do for your community I'm telling you there's a residue of the anointing on these students on these that are experiencing the power of God tonight I wouldn't doubt it if miracles break out all over this place tonight I think mama parsley had a word earlier I think somebody's leaving here mama with a miracle tonight there's no doubt in my mind there's miracles even tonight it's already in the atmosphere it's already it's already in the atmosphere Woo. you thought I was worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping <laughs> So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for oh, yeah. You sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know You thought I was worth I can't turn it loose, I feel the anointing you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You thought, you thought I was to die for. You thought I was to die for. Arthritis. Is there anybody close to me with arthritis? Ar ar right here, you were you're already down here. In the name of Jesus, in your knee. I command arthritis to be healed. God didn't forget you. See, you've been down here the whole time. In the name of Jesus, be healed. My God. Ready to 
tonight. We got to get out of here, but somebody just got healed of arthritis. He's running over there. In the name of Jesus, come on, stretch your hands his way. Stretch your hands his way. Be healed. 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 God thought enough about you to die. Man, what a powerful anointing. So he cleans you up inside. You thought I was to die. just bless this place in the next 10 days that unprecedented miracles would break out that God would invade every area of your space so much so that you can't even rest without thinking of who can I reach who can I bring and what can I do to get the people in my world into an atmosphere like this right here and I declare in the name of Jesus that tonight is just a precursor you know before there's an earthquake a real earthquake you will feel tremors and I think last Sunday y'all had a tremor here and I'm telling you this Wednesday night it's another tremor that's hitting this place and I'm telling you world harvest an earthquake is on the way I declare it in Jesus name miracles signs and wonders come on you thought I was what
Can we thank Pastor Trent Corey for bringing a word to us tonight from the throne of God? Come on, let's thank him. Hallelujah.